Hello everyone, welcome back to another Star Citizen AA. This is a special Let's Play Arena Commander edition. So here it is, the Hornet. The Super Hornet is the one I bought. This is the F7C. I haven't been excited to play this and I don't know why. I guess it was the lack of punch that I thought it was going to have. Or durability, or maneuverability, or just that excitement of flying the Ace of Aces. I think that CIG is still balancing these ships. And in the beginning, I really didn't want a Hornet. And I bought it when the F7CM was out because I wanted the limited edition. And I wanted the ability to buy the military skin to help support the veterans. It sat in my hangar and I go and I look at it and I jump in it. And I just don't get the same feeling that I do when I'm around my 300i or actually my 315p or my avenger but this match may have changed that you see they've done some changes in 12.1 made a couple of adjustments to the ai added a little bit more oomph a little bit more strength a little bit more durability to the well to the ship to the hornet and made it an exciting ship to fly and the second part of that is, I also started to get better. Better at using my X-55, and better at playing the game. This is a long match. I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should let you guys watch the whole thing. I figure, why the hell not? But it would be boring as poo for me to sit here and color commentate the whole thing. So I'm left with a challenge. Do I put it out there all 55 minutes that this match took me to get to level 12? Or do I speed it up and break it down to 25, 26 minutes? And see how you guys feel watching it at 2x speed? I really don't know. So I think until this point, I'm going to play it at regular speed and then speed up the rest of the film until the last, the very last few minutes of the match. There are some pretty exceptional things that go on in this, and I'll talk to you about it in just a moment. So now that I've sped up the action, let's see how this one goes, and I hope most of you will cut me some slack on this one. This was one of my best matches ever and before this it was level 11 and a 300i they've added a little bit more punch to the weapons a little bit more armor and i figured out how to use the couple mode i'm going to leave that up to you to tell me when you see me doing that one of the things i found with the hornet before was it was just unimpressive it wasn't exciting it didn't give me that feeling that wow i am in the ship that's supposed to be the top of its class for the UEE military. It more or less felt like it was yesterday's ship, and when I likened it to the Phantom, I think it lived up to that initial description. This is supposed to be the latest combat fighter, the best ship in the sky, the spacecraft that's taken down man more Vanduul ships than any other in the history of the UEE. And yes, we have the, F the F-8 Lightning coming out, but this is still the ship that every pilot wants to fly. And I didn't until today. I think that the ship really needed a good pilot, one that understood how to work the throttle, how to work the decoupler, and how to be aware of what was going on around them. There are times that I do lose a little bit of my situational awareness here. And of course, the broken pieces of the game, especially when it tells you hold for automatic repair and resupply, which never happens. But I, I get the feeling that this ship is all that it's cracked up to be. And as balancing goes on and weapons get tweaked and systems get taken care of, I think that this is going to be everything that all the lore says this ship is. The Hornet 
is the best fighter in the game so far. It doesn't mean that it can't be outperformed by a 300i. One thing I like about Chris Roberts' games are that there's always a point counterpoint. Yes, this can take a beating and can dish out a wallop. It could open up a can of whoop us whip ass on you and make you forget where you were. But the 300i so far, I can see it being placed in the hands of somebody that is a much better pilot, somebody that's much more adept at playing with the systems and, you know, harassing you <laughs> until you just want to give up. But I think that a average pilot in a 300i is not ever going to be able to take on an average to above average pilot in one of these Hornets now. I think that the balancing as it's going on right now is proving that at some point in the future CIG is going to get it all right. I have a problem with the game being situated where every ship could kill every ship. That's not the way it happens in real life. You're not going to watch um, a MiG-21 or a MiG-23 or even an old MiG-25 take down a well, an F-22 or a brand new Su-37 or whatever the Russian fighters have out there. I don't think a British Tornado or a Eurofighter is going to be taken out by a 1950s aircraft, right? And that's one of the things that I like about, well, realistic games. But when we look at that, that model, how is it going to work in the system, you know, in this space? Well, let's look back at World War II and let's look on the battlefield of tanks. The Germans had absolutely the best tanks in the war for quite a bit of the war. Yeah, people talk about the T-34 and they talk about the Sherman. Well, no one talks about the Sherman. It was sheer numbers that overpowered the Germans, not better hardware. It was the fact that every time a German tank took a hit and got damaged, it was going to take a lot longer for it to be repaired. It was about fuel and you know logistics, getting ammunition to where it needed to be. And in this game, it's going to be about the same thing. Yes, we're all going to meet on the battlefield and an arena commander. There's going to be a little bit more of a balancing act. But in the Persistent Universe, however, I'm hoping that that balancing act isn't too strict. I hope that they're going to allow certain aircraft to be taken down by others just by the sheer fact that they are far superior to them. So tactics like flying in a group or getting mercenaries to back you up or even being more stealthy and taking more secure routes will have to be done. I mean, I remember days way back in the EverQuest era and you had to take your character from one end of the continent to the other. If you walked through Kithgore Forest at night and you weren't of a higher level, you were killed immediately. But in the daytime, you'd make it through fine. So you altered your tactics. You went through it in the daytime. So maybe in Star Citizen, if you're an Aurora, in an Aurora going through a, well, hostile space to try to move your arms around, maybe you're moving around some needed medical supplies. Maybe you're moving around some luxury goods. And possibly doing it alone is going to get you killed immediately. And that's when you go onto the message boards and see if there's somebody to help you out and to watch your six as you're going through those areas. Maybe you have to hire mercenaries because you're not part of a group and no one's coming to your aid. Either way, I see that as being important. As important as, uh, say, ha having the right skill for the ship that you're going to purchase. So I've gone through this match and I've learned a lot. I mean, basic air combat, in this case, space combat tactics, are starting to make sense to me. 
And looking at all the things that the ships can do is going to take a long time. Being able to get that power slide in with your afterburner and kicking the ship over and just sliding out of the way of something, or maybe a strafe, or decoupling at the right time and spinning around to get the guy on your rear end. These are all things that we have to learn to play this game to its fullest. I am very excited about where this is going just by seeing how this game has been corrected over the last week. Remember, the game came out last Wednesday. Tuesday, Wednesday, depending on where you were in the world, I guess. I didn't get to play it until Wednesday night. And already we've had some major updates. The Aurora has gotten the increase in the energy distribution or I should say the energy management of the weapons and also how intense the bolts are that are fired out of the M3As. The Hornet's gotten an upgrade to the CF007 Bulldog weapons that are in its turret. The 300i stops bitching at you all the time that it's overheating. So things are starting to balance and I've noticed that the AI is getting a little bit tougher that by the time you're getting to level 6 and you're fighting the priest he's firing missiles at you but so are the scavengers and the hunters that are engaging you that was pretty intense because I didn't expect it when I was in this particular match let me tell you talking for a full 35 minutes during this game is gonna be fun because I don't know what to say half the time and honestly I, I put things down on paper to talk about and I know that there are times in the game that I'm gonna have something fun to talk about but in reality this game is so brand new and so minute as compared to what it's going to be in the end it's tough to give a full impression all I can give an impression of is what's going on here in Arena Commander which again remember I've said it before it's like Inception it's a virtual game inside of a virtual game but nonetheless as my ship is taking damage and my smoke is coming out of the 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 panel in front of me I'm trying to see who's behind me sometimes that will just get you killed immediately and of course with the film running at 2x it's kinda tough to see what's going on you gotta bear with me here right I promise you that at the right time I'll slow it down. At one point in the near future, you're going to see, and I think this is it right now, we're going to slow it down right now. Well, maybe not. What's going on right now is I've taken so much damage. I'm not able to fly without spinning out of control, and I try and try and try to get back into control again. But if you look, they've taken out a couple of my thrusters. It's very, very hard to see because the paper doll on the upper left is not really showing it. But there's a little bit of red on the front left, just um, to the rear right hand side of the left intake. And that thruster is shot. So whenever I actually try to fly at any speed, I just do what's going on right now. Go around and round and round in circles amazingly detailed they got the physics of that am amazingly well so what I've done is I've hit the caps locks key which is tough with the uh, x55 joystick because it is not at this point mapped to any key and what I'm doing right now is just spinning my ship around its axis I don't even know if it's moving at this time and I'm trying to take out the ships that are up here I believe this is level six and I eventually get the last ship and expect to get resupplied and that's going to happen any moment now and I don't so I essentially have to punch out to become viable because if I just sit this way I'm going to not be able to partake in any of the battles and lose my wingman which is almost immediately going to get me killed and that's one of the tough parts of this game is that we are definitely still in an alpha I need to remember that 
All right, so I believe this is going to be the last Vanduul that's killed in this particular wave. Actually not. I see uh, multiple ones on the... Uh, <laughs> I keep on calling it the Hades, but it's the uh, radar globe right down there. I see probably two more after this. This was a blast trying to get these done. And this, you know, managing this piece is what actually got me to level 12. Had I not tried to do this, it never would have happened. Look how gorgeous everything is. And one thing I want you to look for is before this, earlier, as I was flying and shooting at one of the uh, Vanduul scythes in front of me, he goes around one of the asteroids in front of me and I blow the asteroid to pieces and essentially he goes crashing into it. That was cool right there. That guy was so, so close to me that my weapons were able to lock on. So one more um, complaint that I have. For those of you using mouse and keyboard, I do not think that you are... I, I'm not going to complain and say that it is a system that gives you the edge. I think that one of the things that are wrong right now is with a mouse and keyboard, you're able to point your weapons wherever you want, as opposed to with the with the method I'm using, the X55 HOTUS, you have to get your pipper so directly on top of the target for the gimbaling system to actually track that it's obnoxious and unrealistic. You would think that at this point in the future, anywhere that you have your cursor inside of that ring, they should actually be tracking, right? Am I right? But they're not. I've got to get it right in the center, center part of it. And again, I'm still flying around in my decoupled mode. And I think it's very soon when I lose my... Yeah, I lost them. I lost one of the badgers, and um, one of the mantises, on the right wing, on the starboard wing, I believe it is. And I just decide, you know what, I've had enough. And at some point in the very near future, I say, see you later, this baby's going to get traded in. Because the last wave, I was supposed to be resupplied and fixed at the end of it, and I wasn't. So I'm empty on missiles, I've got no wing, I've got no tail, my thrusters are being damaged, and I'm a sitting duck, and really should have been destroyed already. And had it not been for my wingman to be the cannon fodder to keep some of these people away from me, I would have been dead. But, you know, I got through it, and I think right about now I decide to punch out, because those badgers aren't even making a dent on the hunter that I was tracking. So I move forward, I get back into a new ship, and I clear this wave. Um, it wasn't pretty, I'll tell you that much. The next couple of waves are just as ugly as the first few. But at least I'm able to compete now with the throttle and joystick, with the X-55. One thing I could say is I can't wait for them to fix the only two control types being able to be used. Because I can see already how desperately in order to control this much better, I want the rudder pedals. The twist on the joystick is very, and you can see it right there, how it moves me off center all the time when I try to use it. It's very obnoxiously oversensitive. So here we go, back up again, back down again, tracking, firing missiles, taking out the Vanduul. And of course, time is starting to rack up this game goes on forever and when you hit the escape key there is no pause i found that yesterday when i was in an hour one of the hour sessions i had and i was at level 10 almost done and had to go to the bathroom and i came back after hitting escape thinking it paused it and it didn't i came back and i was just 
floating around in space. So I had lost one of my ships. And the minute I came back on my next ship, I was pretty much hosed because the spawn point that I had last night was right where everybody was fighting. And it just got me killed quickly. Alright, so we've got our tactics down. Let's talk about evasion, okay? Coming up in the next few levels, people start to use missiles. Currently, I've got to have my hands on the throttle and stick to make this thing do what it does. Having proper throttle management keeps you able to keep your pipper on the target. These scythe are losing speed in a turn, not from drag or losing lift, but because they're not getting, gaining any forward momentum. They're actually sitting there just spinning in circles around you. As they lose that forward momentum, you want to lose some too so you don't go past them. So being able to pull back in the throttle is important. But it also doesn't allow you to push the buttons that you really need. And it's my stupidity for not having figured out how to change between chaff and flares on the X-55. And by the time you guys watch this, I probably would have figured that one out. But in level 9 here, as you fight Bloodhound, there are a lot of missiles that start fly you know, flying your way. And of course, I go right for the asteroid field when I start getting up this high level. Why? There's more places to dip around and lose a missile. There's um, a lot more ways to die, <laughs> of course. But, and, and, well, and it's a lot more challenging. Oh, see what I mean? That one pretty much hit my main thruster. And now I'm back in the same situation I was before. Only, oop, there's another missile. See what I mean? It's like they're expending all their missiles on me, thank God, because if they had taken out my wingman, I would have been gone in a heartbeat. And that is what happens in the next couple of rounds. I lose all my wingmen. So Bloodhound right now is the highest I've ever gotten. He is gone, and now all I have to do is take out these hunters that are left. Not a bad deal. Theoretically, oh, I just bang the bejesus out of my ship. Theoretically, at the end of this level, I should have had an opportunity to rearm and repair. But it didn't happen. Didn't happen at 6 or 3 either, and it ain't gonna happen here. I'm not sure if it's supposed to. I've read something about it happening, and I've heard that ominous <laughs> Um, warning that if you know hold safe we're gonna rearm you and repair you now that never happens it well it has happened once which is why I believe it's supposed to happen but it's happened once so me using all these missiles is one of those things that I actually thought they would be gonna come back I'm like all right didn't happen three didn't happen six maybe it's happening every nine levels now or just once in the game and it didn't happen. So here I am going into level 10 with no resupply. <laughs> what was I thinking? So evasion. How do we evade missiles? How do we evade people on our tail? That's hard. Um, you have to learn how to decouple real well because if there's someone on your tail and you decouple and pull your nose around, you're going to be able to take them out. But you also run the risk of somebody flying up your rear end real fast, just slamming into your back end and killing you that way because he's probably taking out your shields already, right? Ooh, this was a good round. I took out these guys real quick, but I bet you I don't have a good time taking out the rest. I'm probably going to blow up real soon. I remember level 10 being one of those that I cussed real loud. And I think it's because I flew right into somebody and I wonder if this is the dude yeah that's it that was the dude I flew right into him he did his little stop in midair and turn and I had the uh, afterburner on trying to pull ahead of him so I could pull back around and went right through him good news is I have a ship that's fully repaired and rearmed bad news is I lost one of my respawns these CF 007s are still not very, uh, still not very good. I, are they viable? Yes, they're viable. Because 
if you think about it, we are going to be fighting against a lot of entry level and mid level ships. Not in every single match are you going to be fighting Vandal Scythe of uh, this caliber. Ooh, had to pull up real quick on that one. So you might be engaging an Aurora, you might be engaging a Mustang, a uh, low end 300. Um, you might be engaging a Cutlass, which although has kick butt looks and arm, um, I guess armaments, weapons, it's definitely not the strongest ship in shields and armor out there. But I guess you just have to take things in stride. Maneuvering is your most important thing. Remember, the more things change, the more they stay the same. I don't mean to quote Bob Dylan there. But if all you do is float around in a circle to the Van Duel that's a click away, you look like you're stationary. So fire and maneuver is an important thing that you have to do. After burning away, after you hit somebody, turning and making sure that you get out of there in a heartbeat, always clearing your six, making sure that whoever's behind you is off you as quickly as possible. Why? Well, because as you get higher in level here, these guys get better. I'm fighting an alpha at one point, I believe I just took one of them down, and you're fighting the hunters and scavengers, but you're also fighting elites, elites from time to time. Every three, right? Every three levels. Prince, the priest, bloodhound, I forget what the guy at number 12 is, I think he's reaper. But you've got to fight these five vandal elites to actually complete the game. And the varying clans, Scavenger, Hunter, and Alpha, are also going to give you more and more trouble as time goes on. Even a Scavenger gains a little bit of, well, it seems that he does, a little bit of confidence. Ooh, ah, uh, see what I mean? There's a little bit of pullback on the throttle there. I am decoupled now. Come on, stop being decoupled. All right, there I go. Not decoupled anymore. And again, I am using a ship that has its tail blown off and at least a little bit more damage, right? So I'm destined to lose one more spacecraft before a level 12. How do I know this? Well, because I flew this match. <laughs> and I know when I die. I also know the ridiculously stupid, idiotic way I do die. Oh, round and round we go. Bam! There it is. Did you catch it? I got blown up by my own guy, right? I don't know if he fired on me or flew right through me, but he blew me up. Good news is, you know, I just respawned close to everybody, so that's good. Bad news is, they seemed to know I was coming because they had a couple of welcome messages for me. All right, so we took out one guy with a missile. And another guy with a missile. And we get through level 11. So we got through 11 levels. Done. And here is the epic fail. The epic fail is... Nikki flies off into the sunset and decides to do what she does when she gets scared. Because this is the one where I'm going to get my butt handed to me by Reaper. But I hit the gas so hard and go right through to the other side and die. <laughs> That's all I got folks. This is one of the best matches I've had. I can't wait to try out more and I'm really dying for the next patch when we get to fly the Avenger which is by far my favorite ship in the game. Well, at least it is now. We'll see after I fly it. You all take care and be safe out there and I'll catch you real soon.
everyone, this is Dr. Lizzie and we are here today for another video of Team Nine Tango. Today I'm going to talk about an enemy safe in life. Does anyone need to go already? Please respond. Yeah, let's do a situation. We've picked up something. I'm going to talk about it. Sure, we've heard. Nemo system. That's just... Does anyone have... Does anyone have... Quickly, to the balance seat! I can't function. Ship is adrift. Ship is adrift.